So now in this video, we're going to look at the NPN bipolar junction transistor accidentally connected backwards, which means you put the collector where the emitter should be and vice versa. And so I'm going to kind of make this video assuming you don't know anything about transistors. Maybe you do. And uh, so this will just be a quick review for you if you already know. So this is a 2N3904. So there's a lot of NPN bipolar junction transistors and then a lot of them are in this TO92 package that looks like this. But uh, in any case, if it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor, it has this schematic symbol. So this is universal. It may be circled though. It may not be circled. Uh, that you, you have a chance that it'll be circled or not. Uh, the main thing is that you have three terminals. So we have just a uh, line here with one line coming out one side and that is the base so that's pretty straightforward and then there's a couple lines coming out the other side and they generally look like this one has an arrow though that's the emitter the one without the arrow is the collector so the same over there so it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor the arrow is not pointing in so the NPN can be thought of as not pointing in but in any case the uh, PMP bipolar junction transistor, the arrow is pointing the other way. And I also wrote some other uh, properties of the 2N3904 and the 2N2222. So you can see they're not terribly different. It's mostly how much current the 2N2222 can handle in relationship to the 2N3904. Also, if there's no A after it, Mine actually have A. I don't think I have a 2N2222 without the A. But uh, if there's no A, you can expect it to block about 30 volts. We're going to look at that later. If it's the 2N2222, you can expect it to block about 40 volts. Well, it's forward bias. That's from collector to emitter right there. So there's uh, some, other, some other stuff. But uh, not terribly important for this video. So that's the maximum current. This one can only handle about 200 milliamps from collector to emitter as long as it stays within its wattage rating. So, in any case, as I said before, it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor. So there's P-type material sandwiched between two N-type material. And so, the way you normally use it is that you provide a voltage and possibly a current to the base 2 emitter and that's how you control how much current can go from collector to emitter and also it can set voltages and stuff but the main takeaway is you give the base 2 emitter a certain amount of current it's going to let through in this case probably two or three hundred times as much current from collector to emitter it varies a bit and whatnot but the main takeaway is you get many, many times current from collector to emitter as you put from base to emitter, which is why it's an amplifier. You get more current, and uh, you control it or uh, in different ways to get different effects. So, if we put these backwards, it will still probably work about the same. So we're going to come to the uh, transistor here, but its failure rate is going to go way up, and that's what we're going to look in this video. So. We're looking at the flat side, left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, and right pin is the collector. So on this sheet that I diagram I drew out, I showed the pin layout there. So we're going to look at a schematic symbol for a transistor that is wired to be off and to stay off. So 2N3904. The emitter, down here we're going to put to the negative rail, I have a jumper to the negative rail. The base, again, we're going to put to the negative rail through the resistor but this will not always be to the negative rail in this video but the load up there we're going to put towards the more positive side of the power supply so emitter to that jumper base to that jumper and then collector up there we're going to take a uh, light emitting diode in this case a red one so that's the anode side towards the more positive cathode going to the collector which heads towards the more negative so when the LED lights up, you want the anode more positive than the cathode. And we're going to limit current. So even though this says 10 kilo ohms, for now, I'm going to use a 1 kilo ohm resistor right there. So 
Right now it's basically wired to be off, but I can falsely trigger it right there, as you can see there. I can give it a signal with, with my finger. So that's actually turning it on and off really fast and not completely on and off. So it, we're, I'm giving very low current and it's letting a greater but still a low current uh, go through. And so if we go to the positive rail, it will be on. Negative rail, it will be off. So I drew uh, this diagram. Before I got this power supply, I'm pretty sure. I think I just used a voltage booster before. That we could look at the voltage. But the main takeaway is that uh, the way we have it wired now, it's wired to be off. And so even with a 1 kilo ohm resistor, as long as we leave it off, we don't want to turn it on. But uh, we can go up to 30 volts. So we don't have enough resistance to uh, turn it on, I can yank the resistor. The main takeaway is we got up to 30 volts. We could have got up to 40 volts and uh, it would stay off. So I'm gonna take the 10 kilo ohm resistor now and uh, we're gonna go to the positive rail. Now it's on as it should be. We're at the uh, positive rail with the resistor. And we can see we got about five milliamps of current on there. And before I shot this and I had to reshoot it, I had that trim pot still over there. Now you can see there's more current because it's 10,000 ohms of resistance there. And uh, so in any case, that's about the current we got there. And this may be a couple of milliamps off. This isn't completely accurate. So let's go back to the uh, 5 volts. And that's the way it's supposed to work. So this is not groundbreaking stuff at all right there that we just covered. And uh, we can leave that at 5.10. You lose about uh, 5.05 uh, volts when you get to that rail. So by putting that slightly higher, you know you have that voltage to the rail. There's resistance in the wires and stuff. So we're going to wire this backwards on purpose. And that's so dim. We're back to 5 volts because... that uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor was really limiting the current. Now that we're back to 5 volts, 1 kilo ohm is still more than we need, but uh, you can see the LED is quite a bit brighter. So let's get this. It's off now. We're going to put this backwards, the uh, 2N3904. And all we have to do, since uh, they're on opposite ends, is just flip it around. Really easy right there. So a lot of bipolar junction transistors the base is on uh, the other, on one of the ends, and uh, I think the uh, base emitter is swapped or something, but the NPN, the uh, base is in the middle, so I can just flip it around. Now the emitter is to the resistor, and the collector is to the negative rail. As you can see there, ground, our zero volt reference point. And so I'm gonna make it darker, that's probably plenty fine. So it is off now, it's wired to be off, and if I go to the positive rail, it will turn on like normal. But we want it off. We want it to stay off. And we should be able to go up to 40 volts if it's wired properly. But uh, we have it backwards. So I'm going to go much easier now. I'm not going to jump up 10 volts at a time. I'm going to go up 1 volt at a time. And when we get to 13, we should see the LED light up just a tiny bit. 14, it's lighting up quite a bit. So, at this point, the the main problem is that it is lit up when it is not supposed to be. It's supposed to be off. We have it wired to be off, but current's conducting. And we can go up another. We got some more current going. So, at the 14 volts, it's not conducting fully, but it's conducting quite a bit when it should be fully off. That That is the main problem. And so... That's the problem with putting the transistor in backwards. At lower voltages, it may be working just fine and uh, may not even be damaging it. I'm not sure, but because uh, I have wired transistors backwards and they seem to work perfectly normal afterwards. But also, I limited the uh, current. As you can saw, see there, we were very careful how much current we put while it was backwards. And now we turn it back around and that's the only change I made you're watching there I feel confident I can just go up 10 volts at a time it's off no current 
went no uh, components got fried or anything and since we have 10 kilo ohm we can put uh, 10 kilo ohm there that's why I use 10 kilo ohms in a lot of, of the video because if now I go to the positive rail we only got about 5 milliamps of current so I think with the power dissipation being spread across those three components this is uh, plenty safe so in any case that's really it for uh, this video and they talk a lot about how the transistor will still work if it's backwards but uh, they kind of leave it there and so uh, the learning material where you, you learn about them so I figured I would do these demonstrations make a video on it and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it thanks for watching I will see you in the next video